Hello everyone. I welcome you to in this exciting journey of Azure Synapse Analytics service, formerly known as Azure SQL Data Warehouse. We will start this section by discussing why we should consider warehousing solutions in cloud and why modern data analytics needs are difficult to fulfill by traditional on-premises environment. On-premises data warehousing projects have a reputation of being very expensive to start and then very expensive to operate on an ongoing basis. However, the cloud has now come to change all that by providing a data warehouse that is fully managed platform as a service and making it easy to provision, load and query your data warehouse cost effectively with good performance, with full T-SQL interface and with compatibility with the rest of the Microsoft data stack. And then we will discuss Microsoft's brand new Azure Synapse Analytics service and how this service brings together enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics and provide a unified experience to ingest prepare, manage, and serve data for immediate BI and machine learning needs. We will discuss how Synapse Analytics Service has advantage over other cloud-based analytics service. And then I will walk you through how modern warehouse architecture looks like and how it is different from traditional data warehouse architecture. And then we will learn how Azure Synapse Analytics architecture is actually a further evolution of modern data warehouse architecture. You will also see Azure Synapse Studio, which provides a unified experience for all data professionals. So whether you are a data engineer or data scientist or database administrator, business analytics or any other IT professional, you will find your space in Synapse Studio. And finally, in demo, we will provision new Azure Synapse Analytics service. We will see how to pause or resume compute node, which is very important, and how to set firewall rules and connect with SQL Server Management Studio. I hope this is going to be a very exciting learning experience for you. So let's get started. Now, Let's take a look at cloud data warehousing and how that differs from a traditional on-premises data warehouse. So why choose the cloud over on-premises traditional data warehousing? And there are several good reasons for that. First, in the cloud, you don't need to do large capital expenses to get started. On-premises, it can be really hard to get all the approvals and justify the big expenses for buying large data warehousing machines and licensing and all. In the cloud, you don't need a lot of staff to maintain your hardware solution, the virtualization or the operating systems. Like I mentioned before, Azure Data Warehouse is a platform as a service offering so all of these things are taken care for you. All you need to do is manage the database itself. In on-premises, sometimes it is very difficult to scale storage and compute up and down on demand. Usually you do a big investment and you can't scale it down at all. Or if you want to scale up, this usually takes time to provision and set up the extra compute power. These operations, on the other hand, can happen transparently and in minutes in the cloud. So how is Azure Data Warehouse built? Storage and compute are separate in Azure Data Warehouse. Since uh, compute is separate from storage, it can be paused when not in use as your data will persist. The ability to both scale and pause the service gives a great control over the cost and will definitely save a lot of money. It also provides seamless integration with other cloud services and this definitely provides a lot of benefits. Finally, 
Azure Data Warehouse uses the power of massive parallel processing. This greatly speeds up the processing time and allows for more advanced queries. We will discuss this in detail in upcoming lessons. Time to market, or more importantly, time to insight, is also a very important factor when reviewing a data warehouse project. Because of compute power and MPP, Azure SQL Data Warehouse could be provisioned in a minutes. Traditional on-premises data warehouse architecture used to look something like this, where you had different sources in many different formats. It could be relational database, could be CSV file, could be XML file, could be structure or semi-structure or unstructured data. And then I run extract, transform, and load process, ETL process. This is typically in memory. It standardizes the data, consolidate it, clean it, and finally data goes into the data warehouse. This has the data and it also have some metadata which describes the data. There's also some work going on behind the scene to administrator or monitoring the database. Then I have my analytics in terms of OLAP servers I can query against. Important point to be noted here is that in analytics, OLAP server compute and storage are tightly coupled together. Even if you are not querying at some point, but still it will cost you. And then I run my queries and do analysis against these OLAP servers, which I finally publish into some kind of reports to business users using Power BI or some other reporting tools. Now, this is traditional, typical data warehouse system. Now, if you think about modern data warehouse, sources of data are just increasing over time. And the need to do meaningful analysis on data has increasingly important for customer. So again, the first thing is to bring this data from variety of sources. And again, data may be from structure system, maybe from some business system, some CRM system or application system, maybe a structured data, unstructured sources. Maybe we need to bring data from IoT data, social media, and variety of other data that maybe we need to bring in and do some analysis on. And then we need to bring this data and ingest it into a storage. There are a number of services in Azure that can do this, like Data Factory. This service can bring this data from different sources and can ingest it into a storage. For storage, now more and more customers are using data lake architecture. This data lake architecture gives you cost-effective way to store that data and keep that data and then perhaps decide what you want to do with this data later. And then this data can be explored. By whom? By data scientists, by maybe data engineers. So they go and look at this data. And then typically they prepare and clean this data. And as we see, a lot of this data is coming from different sources. And some of these sources are structured system, some of them are unstructured system. So when we combine this data, we often have a lot of uh, quality issues. Often this data is not very clean. It often has a lot of quality problems. So doing data quality is critical in modern data warehousing system. And majority of time people spend in cleaning and preparing this data. This is a very critical phase in modern data warehouse. And when data is prepared, we can model and serve this data to the business so that business can actually ask questions. What does that mean? That means 
creating a dimensional model of data, creating a structural model of data so that people can understand its shape, structure, its schema, and creating a single source of truth where business can rely and where business can actually ask questions. And then finally, BI and reporting workload and advanced analytics build on top of this solution. Now, one very important thing to be noted here is that in this modern data warehouse solution, compute and storage are separate. I repeat, compute and storage are separate. So they charge separately and they can be on only when they are in use. And I will keep repeating this point many times in this course because this is very important to understand. So for storage, you only pay for the amount of storage, not for the transaction in storage itself. There is no cost for storage transaction. And another one is compute power. This is another piece of how the service is built in the compute power. The data warehousing unit, DWU. CPU, memory, and IO. Bundled all of these three into a unit of compute scale and that is called data warehousing unit. So you pay in terms of DWU, data warehousing unit. So let's say for example, you increase uh, from 100 data warehousing unit to 500. So you will get billed for that R for 500 data warehousing units. If on the next R you bring it back down, then again you will go back to paying 100 data warehousing unit. However, if let's say for one R, you have two different values of data warehousing unit, you will pay for the highest one during that one hour. So when not in use, compute power of the Azure SQL data warehouse can actually be completely paused for maximum savings. So for example, let's say your data warehouse gets no use during the weekends. You can pause it completely and save yourself that cost. Please note that when you pause the compute, you will still get charged for the storage. So whatever storage you are using, you will still get charged for it. But if you are not querying the data, you can just stop the compute and pay only for storage. So two very important things happen here. First one is compute you can stop and you only have to pay for the storage. And the storage itself is also very cheap. When we are using Azure Data Lake storage architecture, it is very cheap. So now you have the flexibility to pull all of your data without filtering. Because this raw data will give you a lot of flexibility in the future for insight, for those questions which you may not know at this point of time. If you have this data, you can ask or you can answer business question which will be raised in the future. Now, this was not possible earlier. As we discussed in the previous slide, in old data warehouse architecture, because the compute and storage were connected, so either data used to filter out or some kind of archiving strategy we used to save the cost. Now, this architecture, this pattern, is a very common way to achieve a modern data warehousing solution. And that's why a lot of customers are moving their data warehousing solution to the cloud. Now, let's see this architecture more in terms of services. How Azure services coming together to provide this solution. As you know, there are many services in Azure and all of them provide a great capability. And if we drill into the modern data warehouse solution, there is a set of services that we can really bring together. First one is Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is a serverless integration product. 
it's been in the market for number of years now and really a mature over those years to enable data integration in a hybrid scenario. Data Factory can bring data from on-premises or SaaS or practically from any type of source. This has more than 80 in-built plugins. I think recently they have added more, so I think more than 90 they have now. This can handle a massive scale of data, huge velocity and volume of data. And this data factory, it has a lot of components. It is going to add not just ingestion point, but it is going to provide complete control flow that will be driving the sets of activity that will complete the overall data flow. So the data flow is a data pass through life, through it creation, ingestion, transformation. So it actually orchestrates that. So this is typically a data factory. This is going to power the ingestion. So now you can bring that data in and bring into your storage solution and land it into a Azure data lake storage. So Azure Data Lake Storage is really a big data store. That's where we do the data preparation, cleaning. This is a place where data comes together, combine and clean, and all kind of transformation takes place. The Data Lake Storage is the cheapest for storage. So I am ingesting it super quickly. Just write it out to Data Lake Storage as there is no real processing going on than just basic movement of data. Little bit of mapping, which means uh, I can just ingest it super quickly because there is not a real computation required. Now, once the data is in the data lake, there are also services used to explore that data. Now, Data Warehouse itself have SQL Polybase capability that allows you to query the data that is in the data lake or maybe data in the data warehouse itself. Or in fact, I might use Polybase to get data directly from data lake and store it into a data warehouse. Databricks is another service which we can use to explore the data. Databricks uh, allows us to use many languages to query and explore the data. In data lake there are many languages like python r scala or maybe sql which customer can choose according to their familiarity or skill set they have so basically customers has lot of choices in terms of language to do data preparation data bricks can either write this data into azure sql data warehouse or it can also work with Azure Analysis Services. Also, Azure Databricks can also allow you to create a Spark environment. Spark clusters give you a lot of power, not just uh, exploring the data lake, but prepare and clean the data. So you can have best of both the world. So finally, after bringing that data into a big data store, and do some beta preparation and exploration. Now, finally, we are ready to effectively publish the data to organization to consume. A place for that you typically use is the data warehouse where you want that source of truth. So the place where you publish your data to business user, that is where the SQL warehouse comes in. So customer can begin to model that data within the data warehouse. Things like uh, creating dimensional model. And this is the place where SQL data warehouse really shine. And as we discussed, cloud data warehouse separate the compute and storage. So you can scale up the compute when you have more users and more workload. And you can scale it down when you have less busy time. So it is a lot more performant data warehouse solution. And um, as we know, the storage is cheap, so it lets you keep the data 
as long as you want. The first generation of Azure SQL Data Warehouse was announced in 2015 and SQL Data Warehouse Generation 2 was available to public in 2018. Now Microsoft is announcing Synapse Analytics which is essentially the third generation of SQL Data Warehouse. Synapse is the next generation of Azure SQL Data Warehouse blending big data analytics, data warehousing, and data integration into a single unified service that provides end-to-end -end analytics with limitless scale. It is first service of its kind to bring multiple technologies together into one unified experience to reduce time to market, to increase uh, development efficiencies, and cut down dependencies between different teams. In Synapse service, end-to-end -end development starting from data ingestion to cleaning, and all the way through to visualizations can be completed in one user interface. Now, you no longer need to switch between uh, multiple tools to build and support your data and analytics platform. Synapse Analytics helps to bring together members from multiple teams into one tool to support collaboration across enterprise data landscape. Azure Synapse Analytics leverage Azure Data Lake Storage as the building blocks of storing and ingesting your data into a data warehouse. Combining the existing capabilities from Azure SQL Data Warehouse with the ability to run both Spark and SQL in clustered and serverless environment, this enable both data scientists and data engineering workloads. This actually helps uh, bridge the gap between the data scientist and data engineer. Traditionally, data engineers use several tools to shape the data in a format that can be support data science applications. And data scientists use many tools which are unfamiliar to the data engineer. Now, by providing the capabilities to support both data engineering and data science in one tool. Now, Azure Synapse Analytics helps break down team silos by providing one unified experience for collaboration. The integration, management, monitoring, and security capabilities are unparalleled in the market providing a streamlined end user experience. With deep integrations between the Azure Data Lake Storage, Azure Machine Learning, and Power BI, Microsoft is able to significantly reduce project development time and time to market with this end-to-end -end analytics solution. Azure has some of the most advanced security and privacy features in the marketplace today. Features uh, such as threat detection, transparent data encryption, and always on encryption are built into underlying architecture of Azure Synapse. Synapse also provides fine-grained access control to help ensure data stays safe and private by leveraging column level security and our native row level security, as well as dynamic data masking to automatically protect sensitive data in real time. Combining these features with a defense in depth security strategy and Azure Synapse gives you complete control of security at all levels of analytic platform. When it comes to analytics, price performance is key. In July 2018, Gigom published a study that showed that Azure SQL Data Warehouse was 67% faster and 23% cheaper 
then Amazon Web Service Redshift. And this was then. Today, with Synapse, it is even better. In the most recent study conducted in January 2019 for the TPCH benchmark report and another study in March 2019 for the TPC DC benchmark report, they found that Azure SQL Data Warehouse is now outperforming the competition up to 14 times. I repeat, 14 times. No one else has produced independent industry accepted benchmarks like this, not AWS Redshift or Google BigQuery. And the best part is, with all of this improvement, Azure is up to 94% cheaper than other services. And that's why I said the Azure Synapse is a game changer. This truly was a massive release for the data team at Microsoft. And it obviously, they are investing heavily in the platform. The continued development and enhancement of rich features across Azure Synapse is what is projecting the service to be one of the top players in the market for providing big data and data warehousing capabilities. This release contained very rich features, not only to the engine itself to increase performance, but also to add new functionality in providing data teams with a unified analytics environment. Azure Synapse Analytics truly a game changer, paving the path towards an integrated data experience for data scientist and data engineer. Azure Synapse Service provides you limitless scale and a worldwide infrastructure. As we discussed, Azure Synapse Analytics leverage Azure Data Lake Storage as the building blocks of storing and ingesting your data into the data warehouse. It is hard to think that anyone is going to outgrow the scalability that this technology offers you in the near future. Azure Synapse Service has deeply integrated with Power BI and Azure Machine Learning to greatly expand discovery of insights from all your data and apply machine learning models to all your intelligent apps. Building end-to-end -end analytics solution with a unified experience. The Azure Synapse Studio provides a unified workspace for data preparation, data management, data warehousing, big data, and artificial intelligence tasks. Data engineers can use a code-free visual environment for managing data pipelines. Database administrators can automate query optimization. Data scientists can build proofs of concept in minutes. Business analytics can securely access data sets and use Power BI to build dashboards in a minutes, all within the same interface using the same analytics service. Azure Synapse has the advanced security and privacy features such as automated threat detection and always on data encryption. You can have fine-grained access control at the column-level security and native row-level security, as well as dynamic data masking to automatically protect sensitive data in real-time. It also has code-free ability. We are talking about 85 native connectors and a code-free visual interface to build ETL or ELT processes to easily ingest data. You can use your preferred languages of your choice, like T-SQL, Python, Scala, Spark SQL, and .NET. And what this allows people to do is not worry about the code so much as to what you are actually going to think about for the data. Now, in the following modules, we are going to use these terms interchangeably the Azure SQL Data Warehouse and Azure Synapse Analytics because they're pretty much the same thing. So let's recall our modern data warehouse architecture, which we discussed earlier in this module. 
In this modern data warehouse pattern, we were really focused on taking best of uh, Azure services and allowing customers to interconnect these to enable really entirely a new analytical solution that they couldn't do with the traditional or enterprise data warehouse. They can bring data in, they can use very powerful ETL service like Data Factory that will bring data to Data Lake and then big data processing engine to process that data. Data warehouse services allows you to serve that data out to organization, enabling visualization of data and BI. So you know really a good solution pattern. Now, as we discussed earlier, Azure Synapse is a further evolution of Azure data warehouse architecture. In modern data warehouse solution, sometimes there is a lot of complexity to wiring all of these different pieces of different services together. You need a right set of services and you need to monitor health, monitor how these services are interacting with each other um, for security, for constraints. You need to manage network across all these technologies pieces. So Microsoft focus on how to create platform end-to-end -end analytics that can not only combine all these capabilities but also can provide a limitless analytics to a single service that really is azure synapse analytics it is an evolution of azure sql data warehouse service and so it provides a unified service that has full integrated capabilities not just etl but hybrid data ingestion and orchestration has built in a service platform. So this is a secure self-service enterprise providing artificial intelligence and big data processing, efficient compute, on-demand uh, query processing, monitoring, management, integrated security, all through one unified service. So earlier that divide that used to exist between the data lake and data warehouse, Synapse has completely eliminated that and integrated broad set of services, including Power BI, Dynamics, Azure Machine Learning, Azure Data Store, and Azure Data Share. And then as you think about existing landscape of data, all the application and things you used inside your environment now integrate with Synapse ecosystem. All right, so now it's a time for demo. In this demo, we will create a brand new Azure Synapse Analytics service. We will change required firewall settings to connect with SQL Server Management Studio. And then finally, we will connect with Management Studio and run query from sample database. We are going to start uh, right here. This is the Azure portal, and this is the default view of Azure portal. You can create a free account for Azure portal. My free account uh, expired long back, so I'm using the paid version. We are now ready to create a resource, new resource. So we'll do this by clicking here and uh, click on this uh, big plus sign, create a resource, and then we'll go to the category database. In this, we can see Azure Synapse Analytics, which is formerly known as SQL Data Warehouse. So let's click on that. So now we are on the page where we can create a new Synapse Analytics service. So first, uh, we need to create a subscription. I'm on the paid version. You can choose your subscription. And then we need to choose the resource group. If you already have resource group, you can select it from here or you can create the new one. I have one which I created um, actually today morning. So I'll just create this one. And um, moving forward in all the demos, whatever resources I will be creating, I will put everything into this resource group so that at the end of uh, 
my demos i will just uh, delete this resource group and all the resources which were created will be deleted and here we need to choose the name of our data warehouse service i am able to create a name data warehouse and now i need to create a server here an azure sql database server should not be confused with microsoft sql server this is just a logical database server which is created in Azure and will be used to manage a group of databases. It is like a central administrative point for all databases inside it. We can change common settings like logins, firewall rules, auditing rules, threat detection policies and failover groups for all databases inside a server. And if we delete a server, it will delete all contained databases. I don't have any previously created server. So I'll have to create a new server here. And this is the logical server. So let's give a name to this uh, new server. So let's try data warehouse server, some unique number to make it a unique. I hope no one has taken it yet. All right, so we got it. Now, next we need to create an admin account, admin name and admin password. And this has a certain amount of criteria in order to name this. We can't name it like admin or administrator. You see, if I type admin, I will get an error. So let me put my name here as a admin name and uh, give some unique password here. And now here we have to choose the location. I will choose uh, Central US as my closest location. And if you see, we have a checkbox here and that checkbox says allow Azure service is to access the server. I am going to highlight this. You can see it if we have a query that we are running from our interface or from our portal or we have any other Azure service that needs to access our data warehouse we need to have this checked. And I'm going to leave this check. If you want, we can uncheck this and we can change this setting later also, which I will show you. So as of now, let's uh, check this and uh, click on OK. Now we need to choose the performance level and I'm going to click on select performance level. This is very important. And this is how you select your compute power, which you are going to use for your data warehouse. I'm not going to do a lot in this demonstration, so I want something cheaper. So you can select it from here. If you want, you can increase it and you can see you can increase up to 30,000 DTUs and it will cost you $453 per second. Or if you want, you can go down here to the cheapest one, 100 DTU, which will cost you $1.51 cents per hour. So I think this is okay for me for the demo. And if you notice that uh, Gen 1 is unavailable here. So Gen 2 is our only option. So let's click on apply. And if I want, uh, I can directly review and create here, but let's go into the additional setting. So here we have option. If you want to provision with uh, your existing backup, you can choose it here. Or if you want to choose a sample database to start with, you can choose here. So I will go ahead with the sample database, which is uh, Adventure Work uh, Data Warehouse, a famous sample database from Microsoft. And if you have to change the collation, you can do that here. We are good with that now. So go to tags, and I don't want to create any tag here at this point. If required, I can do this later also. So click on review and create. Review all the settings. Everything looks good. And you can see once again that it is going to cost me $1.51 per hour. And I'm fine with that. This is enough for me to record this demo. And let's click on create. Now it only takes a few moments and our deployment is underway. Everything is being built in the background. If you have ever built or installed a SQL Server from scratch, you can appreciate how little effort this actually takes to do this in Microsoft Azure. So let me go ahead and fast forward this video and I'll come back once it's done. All right, so now it is done. Let's go to the resource. And we are now in the brand new Azure 
Synapse Analytics Service. You can see here Synapse SQL Pool. So in Azure, now Data Warehouse is called as a SQL Pool inside the Synapse Analytics Service. And the first option you can see here is the pause. If you click on this, You'll get a little message here that there are no active user queries. Would you like to continue and pause SQL pool? And I can say yes, and this will pause the compute node. So basically this message is saying that if you have any existing queries which are running on the background, and if you pause this compute node, all those queries will be canceled. So you have to be a little careful when you pause this. But since I'm on the brand new, Synapse Analytics page, I don't have any query, I can go ahead and click on this yes. But uh, I'm going to continue recording and show you the demo, so I'm not doing it. So I'll say no. So basically, in just a matter of moment, just by a small click, you can pause your data warehouse, uh, at least a compute note. You will still be charged uh, for the storage though. On the front page here, you can see all the settings which we choose while provisioning this uh, SQL Data Warehouse. You can see our resource group. If you want, you can change it here. Uh, current status is online, our location, subscription, tags. We didn't choose tag while provisioning, but if you want, you can do it now. And here we have our ser server name. Here we have our connection strings. If you want, you can use these uh, connection strings in your applications. And then we have performance level, which you can change it here. I'll show you all these uh, in upcoming demos. And on the left hand side, again, we have the settings, we have security, common task, monitoring, and support and troubleshooting. I'll be going through all of these options one by one in our upcoming demos. But now, what I want to show you is how to connect this new SQL Data Warehouse using our management studio. So to connect to our management studio, we need a server name so you can copy it here. You can see the fully qualified name of server where we can access our database. So in order to connect to the database, we can copy actually our server name from here. Or actually you can also click on server name if you want and go into the page of server. And here you can see the properties of this server itself. Again, we have the resource group, status, location, subscription. And here you can see the admin account. You can see the admin ID, Ishan. Or you can change the firewall settings here if you want. And I am going to change actually these firewall settings. But before that, I want you to see that if you don't change this firewall setting, what kind of error you are going to see. So I'll come back on this section later. But before that, Within the server, you can uh, create a new data warehouse database if you want, or you can create the normal SQL database if you want. You can reset your password, and uh, here also you have all those settings here. So let's go to the management studio and try to connect this server. So let's copy it here once again. Now I'm in my management studio, so let's connect and connect to the database engine and put your copied server name here and uh, i should use uh, sql server authentication to connect to this server so here i have given my uh, admin user id and password and here's the error i wanted to show you that your client ip address does not have access to the server sign into an Azure account and create a new firewall rule to enable access so we have two options now First, um, we can just sign in from here using our Microsoft Azure account and we can change this setting. Another option is we can go to the portal and uh, add this IP address of my system, current system, so that we can access it from here. But I want to show you through the portal. So let's go back to the portal. All right, so I'm in my portal once again. And if you see, I'm in the SQL server. So I will go once again to the show firewall settings. And this will take us uh, here where we have our client IP address. And if you remember, while provisioning, we had an option to check the box for allow Azure services and resources to access the server and we did select that checkbox but the same option we also have here 
so you can on and off that setting here now we need to add a client ip address and for that we are going to click here add client ip since it is my local laptop from where i am accessing both the azure as well as my management studio so it can take the default uh, ip of my laptop from here but if you are connecting from some other location then whatever is your ip of that location you can add it here manually but as i said since i'm on my same laptop i can just click here add client ip and you can see that uh, they've added that ip here and i'll just click on save and i will click on ok if you notice that it adds up our client ip address to the firewall down here and the range is one address so if we have more services to connect we can have more ip addresses here we can add the range of ip addresses here or in fact uh, we can add the whole uh, virtual network using these options here so now since uh, ip address of my laptop has been added into azure now let me go back to my management studio and try to connect with this server once again so now here i'm back to my management studio let me cancel this and try this once again all right so we have successfully connected to our brand new azure synapse analytics service data warehouse with our management studio i can see on the left side the name of the server and using the credential admin credential which is ishan so let's expand our databases and we can see we have system database as well as the data warehouse database which we created and if you remember we choose the sample database while provisioning this uh, data warehouse and we can see adventure work data warehouse sample dimensional and fact tables right here so now this uh, data warehouse or we can say data pool actually is the right technical word in synapse environment so this data pool now is ready to work with and if you want you can create a new queries you can create new tables so let me create a new query here and let's say i want to find out the top 10 best data warehouse resellers so let me run this sample query where the business type is warehouse and i'm grouping by based on the reseller name and i'm taking total sum as a sale and then i'm order by using the sale so it will give me top 10 best warehouse reseller and i can see i have a result here so in this demo we learned that how easy it is to provision new azure synapse analytics environment and uh, after creating that environment we need to add the firewall setting from the application from where we are trying to access it in case of our demo we were trying to access it through the management studio so we added the ip address of the environment from where i'm running the management studio in my case it was my laptop so i just added that ip address into the firewall and i was able to access it through management studio and this uh, data warehouse is ready to use all right before moving forward one thing which you don't want to miss or forget that is pausing our data warehouse so let me go back to my portal and uh, let me go to my sql pool and once again as i told you in the start we have the pause option here so i can click on pause and again it asks me if there is any existing running query which uh, not in my case so i will say yes please continue and pause and it will take few minutes to pause this so if you are not uh, going to practice the next demo now i would suggest you to pause this to save some money thank you very much azure synapse studio brings together the ability to ingest explore analyze and visualize your data all through one user interface it offers the capability to query your data using either serverless on-demand compute or provisioned resources. Bringing these two concepts together, Synapse delivers the ability 
to ingest, explore, analyze, and visualize data through a single pane of glass to support business intelligence, machine learning, and data science workloads in the cloud. So basically, it is an end-to-end -end unified experience, not only for data engineers, but also for data scientists. The ingestion process in Azure Synapse Studio provides a very similar experience like Azure Data Factory. You will have the ability to build pipelines and can take advantage of the copy data wizard. Leverage data flow to perform your business transformations and retain the ability to manually trigger or schedule the execution of pipelines. The Explorer functionality is like Azure Data Explorer or Azure Data Studio. Microsoft has provided us with the ability to explore storage accounts, data lakes, and databases all within the same interface. For example, similar to like a right click of a table or view in SQL Server Management Studio, and you use uh, like select top thousand, you now have the similar capability in Azure Synapse Studio to query files that resides in storage accounts and data lake. Microsoft brings together the ability to run both SQL and Spark, providing a single pane of glass to help bridge the gap between data engineers and data scientists. Using Azure Synapse Studio, you have the ability to analyze and transform data using both T-SQL and Spark notebooks. The Develop tab within the Azure Synapse Studio allows you to develop and explore T-SQL scripts, Spark notebooks, data flows, Spark job definitions, and Power BI. And aside from the wow factor of having everything at one place, in my opinion, the coolest capability is how Power BI has been exposed and integrated into Synapse Studio. It's now linked directly to the Power BI service. Any data sets or reports that live in your Power BI workspace are now browsable, can be edited directly in Synapse Studio and republish out to the Power BI service. Additionally, you have the capability to create new datasets and reports and publish those to Power BI as well. Synapse Studio is still in internal preview, so we do not have access to it. And once it is available, I will record a demo on it. But meanwhile, I am so excited to share this uh, new unified experience with you all that I'm not able to wait for Studio to become available to all of us. So what I'm going to do right now here is I'm going to share one Microsoft video with you all. In this Jan 2020, during Ignite Summit, Santosh Balasubramaniam, who is the project manager at Azure Synapse Analytics, presented this demo, which I want to share with you all. What I want to show in this demo is uh, First, I'll walk through the concepts which you're going to be exposed in in Azure Synapse Analytics. Once I do that, I'm going to walk through an end-to-end -end use case. So let me start with the concepts. All right, everybody can see the screen now. Uh, so the first thing, the first concepts that I, that I want to talk about is the concept of a workspace in Synapse Analytics. You go to the Azure portal and you create a workspace. A workspace is where you create your SQL pools, which are your warehouses. A workspace is where you create your Spark pools. This is where you create your data integration pipelines for your end-to-end -end analytic solution that you're creating. So I go and I provision a workspace. When I provision a workspace, I do not pay for anything. Provisioning a workspace is free. It is up to me to decide for my analytics project, what do I need to do? and what are the resources that or capabilities that I need to use. For example, if the first thing I need to do is I want to ingest data and I want to uh, explore the data with SQL before I serve it to my business users, all I will do is I'll create some data pipelines, 
I'll ingest data to the data lake and use SQL on-demand capabilities, which I will show you in order to explore the data. But as and how you want to evolve your analytic story, what you can do is you can add new SQL pools, new Spark pools to your workspace. Uh, uh, whenever I say SQL pool, please remember this is what you know as the data warehouse. Uh, so the other thing about the workspace I want to actually say, and this was interesting because I was working with a, one of our preview customers. Uh, we've been working with a bunch of preview customers before we came here. They asked me a question, which is, oh, wow, you're bringing data integration capability, you're bringing Apache Spark, you're bringing SQL analytics capabilities. Now that you bring these capabilities, which regions will these be available in? And what is the compliance? This is an interesting thing because what we want to do is we don't want you to think about these things. We want you to think about what regions is your workspace available in? What is the compliance that you have in your workspace? You, we want you to go secure your workspace, set up your VNet at a workspace, and use any of the capabilities within in order to create your end-to-end -end solution. You know, even these things, which is how do I do lifecycle management, remove the concept of having to do it at individual tools level. Think about doing it at the workspace level. So that is fundamentally why you're creating your workspace. Now, once I create my workspace, I'll click on this Launch Synapse Studio. So as, as I had said, this is the end-to-end -end experience. Oh, I'm gonna do it like this and then I'll expand it out. But this is where I come to develop, manage, monitor my end-to-end -end analytic solution. I can ingest data from here. I can explore data using Spark or SQL. I can analyze the data. I can connect to Power BI and Azure Machine Learning from here. So, uh, just a quick walkthrough of what is this analytics uh, studio, Synapse Studio. The first thing I want to talk about is data. And here, what you see is all of my data. It is the data which I have in my data lakes. It is the data which I have in my databases. So whether it is my data lake, and this is one of the data lakes I'm gonna show you in the demo, uh, uh, all the containers in the data lake, I can, I can go and explore this data lake from here, just the same way that I can explore my warehouses from here as well, or my SQL pools. Uh, the, the databases that I've created on, using Spark, my Spark databases, my SQL on-demand databases, all of these things, now you have a single pane of glass for your data. And I can analyze this data any way that I want, whether in notebooks or in SQL scripts. And that's what I want to show you next. Next, we have this concept called the development hub. This is where I do my end-to-end -end development. Whether it is creating my SQL scripts, whether it is creating my Spark notebooks, whether it is creating my data flows, which is code-free development that you will actually see today, uh, or even my Power BI reports. Uh, and what we want to do here is we want to enable folks to very easily collaborate with each other, whether it is my Spark developers or SQL developers. Some of the things that we are working towards in this is how can I give access control across each of these artifacts so I can start sharing my artifacts with others as well. Uh, next is the place where I come in order to create my pipelines. So here is where I create my pipelines to ingest data, orchestrate them, and of course, you can monitor this end-to-end, -end. I can manage this, management is where I create things which we call like link services or external services. Uh, this is where I can put my credentials so I don't actually have to pass credentials everywhere in uh, the rest of the solutions that I'm building. Uh, I can act, manage users from here. So, now that I have done a quick walkthrough of uh, the product, let me actually walk through a demo. What I want to tell you in this demo is I'm going to show you starting with a BI report because this is what I see many customers saying. I have this BI report and I want to get data in here. I want to create this report. Uh, anybody from New York here? All right, so you will find this interesting, hopefully. So what you see here is uh, data actually from New York City open data set. So this is data which is coming on yellow cabs, green cabs, 
for hire vehicles, which is Uber and Lyft vehicles. Uh, this is public data, which is available to everybody. Uh, as you can see, yellow cabs uh, and the for hire vehicles, which is the Ubers and the Lyfts, around July 2016, it started taking off and it's taken off quite. So in order to build this, by the way, this report is running of direct query right out of the SQL pool that I'm going to show you in the workspace, okay? Uh, but in order to get this even in the SQL pool, before even running this report, one of the big things that I had to do was I had to go to this public data set, and I had to pull the green cap data, the yellow cap data, the four hair vehicles data. I'll also show you some other public data sets that I have pulled from here. Once I pull this data set into the data lake, then I have to look at this data and see, is this, data, is this data clean or do I need to cleanse it in different ways? Once I cleanse it, I need to be able to load this into my SQL pool in order to create this report. I'm going to show you how creating one workspace, which is the workspace that you created with Azure Synapse Analytics, you can do all of these capabilities for creating this report. So the first thing that I'll show you here is uh, in Synapse Analytics, actually I'm going to go to the pipeline, and I have opened some of these things, so pardon if I'm going between different tabs. This is the pipeline that enables you to create this end-to-end -end solution. And I am going to make sure that you can see this pipeline. So in order to create that report, you needed to ingest data, for which we use what is called the copy data activity. The copy data activity is what allows me to connect to different sources and different sinks and be able to ingest data. Here I have ingested data from the yellow cab raw data, the green cab raw data, the four hire vehicles. I've even bought some holiday data in. Uh, and this holiday data is from exactly the same place, which is the open data sets and weather data. All of this data is coming into my data lake. That's where I have ingested this. Uh, and I'll show you the data lake where I have ingested the data. So I go to my data tab. This is the data lake where I have ingested my data. And I'll go and look at one of these data sets that I have ingested. So I'll look at the yellow cap data set. This is public data which is coming. So I'm assuming this is going to be completely clean. Let's see. No, this is not. And if you go and today get this data, this is how it is going to be. Uh, we have data all the way till 2084. <laughs> and why do we have this data? The reason this is, is, I mean, this is not just about public data. This is about any data. Any data that comes in, the first thing that you have to do is really think about how do I clean this? What, what do I need to do to, to get it ready for me to get my insights from this data, correct? So. The very obvious thing, I have some bad data, so I'm just going to get rid of a bunch of data in different folders. I just want, let's say, 2015, 16, 17, 18. But the next thing I want to do is I want to go and see, all right, is it just the files and folder, the folders that I need to clean up, or do I need to do something else? So I go in here, and I see, oh, there's a parquet file, which I had this drop of data in. How do I work on this Parquet file? I can download this, I can open a Parquet reader, or with Synapse Analytics, I could right click this and say, I want to use this with a SQL script or I want to open this with a notebook. I'll open this with a new SQL script and I'll run this. And by the way, I, don't, I actually don't know what is going to happen here. This is live, I'm just, I just randomly pick some month. I might or might not have picked this before. But what I'm doing here is I am running what is called a SQL on demand query. What you notice that I'm doing here is I am not setting up any, uh, any provision resources. I'm not doing any of those things. All I want to do is I right click a file and I say run my query. No ETL, nothing in order to do this. By the way, I used to work in SQL Server, so if folks are familiar with Always On, I worked on things like that. And the reason I'm saying this is because I am more of a SQL developer. I am more familiar with exploring data in the data lake this way rather than actually exploring it with Spark. But there are other people. There are people in my team who are more uh, comfortable exploring this with Spark and the different languages such as Python, Scala, and things. 
I could have done that as well, and I'll show you how to do that. But before that, let me actually show you what I learned. What I learned is this particular file, it has vendor ID, it has drop-off information, it has passenger count, that's interesting. Uh, it has lat long. You know what, I don't need to cleanse any of this data. I just need to filter out those files. But before I go and do the next stage of prep, I wanted to show you one quick thing. Uh, with SQL On Demand, it is not just about running these very simple queries. It is also about using the, the power of the SQL language and being able to run more complex queries directly on the data lake uh, without uh, having to worry about any of the provisioning resources. So here is an example of one of those queries. And I'm going to run this. I don't know how long this, uh, uh, how much data this is going across. But this is basically a query which is saying the distribution of customer count across all the rides which has happened in 2016. So while I run this, I'm going to just, given time, I'm going to go ahead a little bit. So now that I have explored my data, I want to be able to do certain other things with this, right? Uh, I want to be able to prepare the data. And to prepare the data, I want to show you a couple of ways that you can actually prepare the data using Azure Synapse Analytics. One of the ways to prepare this data is using data flows. And this is, I am going to go and show this to you. So here I can double click my data flow and I open this up. This takes the complexity of even writing code away from you. All I did was I said, what is my raw data source? What is the sync which I'm putting it back in the data lake? And here, just tell me what transformation that I need to do. I can do joins, I can do a bunch of aggregates and a bunch of different things. And this runs the query, and this runs the transformation at cloud scale internally, what we do. Here I'm just saying the data that I want to remove is a 2015, 16, 17, 18. I could have also chosen to do this in a notebook. So here is a, uh, here is a notebook that I created uh, using Scala and doing exactly the same thing. I just realized I also have 2014 in here. But what I have just showed you is I can do both code first and code free ways of doing data transformation. It is not just these simple transformations. I can use the power of Spark, Apache Spark, using Python, Scala, C Sharp, Spark SQL, and I can do all of the things that folks familiar in my organization want to do for their data transformation. Once I transform this data, now I want to be able to say, I want to load it into uh, my SQL pools and create my BI reports on top of this. So how do I do this? I could have done this in multiple ways. We have a first class Spark to SQL connector in which right here in the notebook, I can put that in and move the data directly uh, to my SQL pools into the tables. Or in this particular demo, I just took the data, I copied it into my SQL pools, into staging tables, and used stored procedures to optimize it. So let me show you how I did that. I took the data, I am closing my storage accounts. Here is the EDW SQL pool that I created. The data is going into my staging tables. Just, I'll stay with the yellow cab. I'll show you the top 1,000 rows. But while that is running, I could also have taken this data. I used stored procedures in order to optimize the data. And the way I created that pipeline for the stored procedures is literally right-clicked on the stored procedure, said, add to pipeline. So this is what I mean by bringing together all of these different capabilities very easily. Uh, some of the things that I wanted to show you, this is your, the data warehouse that you know, your SQL pool. Uh, you can run all the queries that uh, you're familiar with. For example, I wanted to show you the, the query which I have written of a view which the original dashboard runs off. Oops. And by the way, the simplicity of using whether I want SQL on demand for serverless or I want my provision is literally this drop down. That's how easy you can do. So I select this drop down, I'll select EDW, which is the SQL pool that I created, and I'm going to run this query. This query is what, uh, is what actually drives this particular report. 
And you can see this here. I'm getting the responses back. And you can see this in the chart. So we have actually even bought quick visualization capabilities for both SQL developers and uh, uh, Spark developers. So basically bringing more and more of these capabilities together. Uh, here is another query that I have run. So what this query does is I bought some holiday data together. And uh, I just wanted to see, like if I live in New York, I want to make some extra money on the side. So which public holiday do I work in? So I took the yellow cap data and saw that, oh, New Year's Day, Washington's birthday, and this is broken up by years. But if I want to aggregate it, I'll do this on a Power BI report, and I'll actually show you how to do that as well. But before doing that, I wanted to quickly talk about Azure Machine Learning. One of the things that we have done is, because AI is such an important part of analytics, we have integrated first class with Azure Machine Learning. So I can open up my, Spark note, my notebook and I can basically use, sorry, I was looking at this earlier, so let me start this from the top. So what I can do is, let's say, I know which holiday that I want to work on. Which area in New York do I want to go and wait with my car so as to maximize my tips? So uh, tips or fares, so I want to predict what is going to be my tips or fares at a particular date in what location in New York. So for this, I'm not a data scientist. But I do know a little bit of Python. So I can basically use the AutoML capabilities in Azure Machine Learning and be able to create my, uh, actually work with AutoML, which recommends which is the right model uh, to choose. And once this right model is chosen, register this model in Azure Machine Learning and be able to infer using the same Spark cluster that I created in the beginning where I'm doing my training and inference. And then I can actually create the data set which I want to publish into or I want to move into my warehouse or SQL pool from where I can run interesting queries. So this is, if you see, I'm doing this from a single pane of glass. And this is the experiment in the Azure Machine Learning Service. But this is that tight collaboration between multiple services, which is very important. Now that I have all of this information, I want to actually go and see if I can go back to my dashboard and, uh, sorry, my report. And in my Power BI report, I want to update it with some new information. So let's say I just want to update in my Power BI report that I originally started with. Uh, let's say holiday information and the holidays in which you have the most number of trips. This is how easy it is. We allow you to link a Power BI workspace with the Synapse Analytics workspace. And once you link this, we pull all the data sets, we pull all the reports, and so now I can do this report development right in this experience. So I can choose to select what is the holiday name, what is the number of trips, or I could have selected anything else. And what I'm doing right now is this is going and getting the data, which is there in my SQL pool, creating the report, and all I need to do is file save. Once I do the file save, this is what my end business users are using, right? Because this is PowerBI.com. So what I have done is I have gone and updated this data directly into Power BI. This is what I mean by saying, so I do that and immediately my business users see this. So this is what I mean by saying bringing all of these things together under a single pane of glass in the same management, in the same monitoring, with all the power of SQL Analytics and Spark and data integration with Azure Synapse Analytics, tightly integrated with Azure Machine Learning and Power BI, that now you can sit in a single place and create your end-to-end -end analytics solution. And the place where I started with today, where I showed you you could create this report, with all the new insights I ended with, what you got in back in your Power BI report. Uh, hope this gives you a good idea of the capabilities of Azure Synapse Analytics. All right, so we saw that how Synapse Analytics end-to-end -end unified experience empower all of the data professionals. So we saw that how Synapse Analytics end-to-end -end unified experience empower all of the data professionals. For data engineers, simply the steps to combine data from multiple sources 
it may be streaming data transactional data or any other kind of business data and as we saw it provides a code free visual environment through which we can easily connect to data sources and ingest transform and place data into storage like data lake using synapse analytics data scientist can build proofs of concept in minutes and easily create or adjust end to end solutions if needed they can provision new resources or they can just simply query existing resources across massive amount of data they have wide variety of languages to choose with like uh, t sql or r python scala dot net spark sql all these languages are supported within synapse analytics now database administrators can use their familiar tools or languages such as t sql to run as many workloads with ease they can assign resources to escalate critical workloads based on intelligent workload importance workload isolation and enhance concurrency capabilities business analytics can build dashboards within azure synapse using power bi they can surely access and share data within an outside organization through azure data share and finally it professionals can protect and manage organization's data more efficiently they have option to enable big data processing with both on demand and provisioned compute azure active directory provide tight integration to securely access cloud and hybrid configurations and they can enforce privacy requirements using data masking as well as row level and column level security congratulations you have reached the end of this module and you are now one step closer to reaching your goal of learning azure synapse analytics service this was a very important module and in this module you learned that what are benefits of doing warehousing in cloud you also learned that azure synapse analytics service is a platform as a service offering inside microsoft azure we learned that it offers multiple advantages over traditional on premises warehousing you also learned about synapse analytics service which is third generation of microsoft data warehousing service and it provides one unified experience to reduce time to market increase development efficiencies and cut down dependency between different teams you learn the difference between traditional data warehouse architecture and modern cloud warehouse architecture and later how synapse analytics architecture is further evolution of modern data warehouse architecture you also learned about synapse studio how it provides unified experience for all data professionals you also learned to provision new synapse service you learned how you can pause compute node when you are not using it and how to change firewall settings to allow azure to connect with application system i encourage you to create synapse account play around it and do not forget to pause it or delete it if you are not going to use it and if you have not already may i request you to please provide your rating your feedback because that is very important to me to keep myself motivated thank you